are you all doing? There you go, that's good. Well, I'm glad to be here. Um, usually I don't speak about beekeeping in English, so you know, my lingo, when it comes to be, you know, the beekeeping lingo, might be a little off, but then you know, feel free to correct me, and I might even ask for help if I don't come up with the correct. <clears throat> So the average in Norway would be about 30 kilos of per colony, <laughs> depending on where you live. The southern tip where I live, we don't have a summer flow every year, and then Heather would be the main flow, and that would probably average about 20 to 25 kilos. In the more eastern part of Norway, they have uh, raspberry, and that gives a lot of honey, and very good honey, and they get a yield of maybe 30 kilos of raspberry and, and probably about 20 kilos of, of heather. So, so I'm having a good time being a beekeeper in the eastern part of Norway. That's so this is the, the European dark bee. I, I, you know, I guess they, they have the, they look pretty much the same here, huh? Yeah. So I'm, I have, I don't have a lot of colonies around me, about three and a half, four kilometers, it's only my bees. And I graft only from purebred queens. And I also test the morphology, you know, the wings, and sometimes DNA, just to be sure. And from when I started, when I started, my, my bees were a mix of everything, and I, I can really <laughs> notice the difference. You know, the black bee, it's not really the perfect bee, to be honest. I mean, they, they, there's too much bees in the air, I think, and sometimes they come over the docks. Uh, but then again, they fly at low temperatures. They, they, they're a little, they start a little late in the, in the spring, and they're ready, ready for heather. So they're really built for the, the, the cold climate. So, you know, so I can, you know, things I'm not happy about, that, that's fine for me. You know, nothing is perfect in life. So for me, they, they work really good. And <clears throat> so I do, I have a two queen system and I, you know, I, I drew this up yesterday and my wife made fun of me and <laughs> <laughs> I thought I did, I did a good job and because she's into straight lines and, and all that stuff and, you know, she would, you know, this computer, she would do like this word so it's straight and, uh, you know, I, I'm not really into that, but, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain how I do this, but here you see the, the, the bottom board, it has an exit here and an exit here and the dividing wall comes down here. So so it looks a little bit like this. So so this is with five frames on each side and then I would have a, a queen excluder on top. So this is what, what, the, what, what, what the colony looks like at the moment with no supers on or no, no nothing. It, it just, this is how, how I overwinter, overwinter the colony. And then in the beginning, middle of May, depending on, on the weather, I'll, I'll put on brood chamber number two. So, and that looks the same as this one. So now the, the queen goes up and lays eggs in, in brood chamber two. And then, usually within a week, 10 days, I have to put on a super. And then I wait a little bit, maybe to the end of May, beginning of June. And then I will lift up brood frames up to the super and putting down clean frames that has no feed or no brood in it. So I will take two to four frames from each side and put up. And I will keep them up there for eight days until they're all capped. And then I'll split the hive. So what I'll do is this box goes on the bottom and the two brood chambers with one super I'll move away. So what, what that in reality does is I'm kind of making a, a fake swarm in a way. So the, 
the, the, and I also I, I add a cell, a queen cell, or or a, a virgin queen. Prefer, preferably, I, I would add a, a queen cell, uh, and then I will just leave this alone, and all the bees from here will also fly back to to this hive. So the queen here is not going to swarm 95% of the time. And, um, and I'll just leave them. And also I give, I give feed them because they use all, lose a lot of bees and are not able to, to, to find nectar for about a week, 10 days. So they get a little feed. And um, then I have two hives instead of one. <coughs> And so, so this method of, of splitting hives uh, was actually invented uh, in what well, the Norwegian way of doing it uh, because of, of just having one, one honey flow heather. So the, I, I don't know what the black bee is like here, but it's not been selected good enough for swarming. So the tendency of, of the, for the black bee to swarm is is, is, is greater than Kalnica or Buckfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's been so, so that's uh, that's been a way for maybe 150 years in Norway to control swarming for the black bee. So, and also you get instead of one hive, you get <coughs> you get two strong colonies for for uh, for heather for the heather flow. So. Do you, do you have any questions about the, the, the two Just when, it, when, when you take the frames out of the, the brew box and put them up to the yeah. upstairs then for about yeah. 10 days, ago, you'd have to go back and check that they didn't make queen cells on it, would you? No, because, well, what I, 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 first I'll, I'll take out brood, 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 brood oh, frames and then, brood. And, and, no, and then I will shake off all the bees so I don't get the queen with it up. Yeah. But since, the, since uh, all the frames are so close to the queen, they will not draw out. And, and any uh, any cells. Oh, but it, where is the queen actually the ring draft then? In the here. All oh, right. Yes. Yeah, it's here. And, yeah. If yeah. I if I put that on top, then then I would have to go back and check. Yeah. And also sometimes, and I'll show you that sometimes instead of splitting the hive, I will just remove frames and put them into a mating box. If I want to make instead of making one hive, I'm, I'm, I might want to make two or three you know, nukes instead. You could, make, you could also sorry, you could also move French further up as well. Yeah, just, I, yeah, I could. Because you're too clean, yeah. you could just mask and, it. And, and, and sometimes if, if I know that I'm, I'm going to harvest uh, frames in maybe uh, just a few days and it's going to rain, then I'll, I'll, I'll put this box on top instead because then you know it, it's easier to work with. Then I can if I wanted to, I could actually just remove the box and put the lid back on. Do you make these boxes yourself or do you buy them? No, I buy them. They're actually especially, especially made for a two queen system because you can fit 11 frames into them. But you can do it with a 10 frame, just a little tighter on space. But I think that what I like about this system is uh, I, I don't really mess with the bees. I, I go down maybe one time in the spring to just check that everything is okay with the queen. And, and yeah. except from that, I, I don't go down and do anything. And uh, because I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a strong believer in just, you know, just keeping off and not, not ruining everything because the, 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 I, I think they, the land is best on, on their own as long as they're not swarming. And was it was the idea to keep them warmer because there's two colonies in the one yeah. box in the winter. Uh, yeah, well that too. Uh, they, 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 they'll keep warmer and also they lay more eggs because when you open up, also in the winter time, you will see they, you know, they, they, they're, they're close to each other. They, they'll, they'll exchange heat and, 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 uh, and also when I put the, like the, the worker bees, the, you know, they're, they, they'll work both queens. Yeah, yeah. The other point, you, you, just when you were talking earlier before, before, before the lecture, you were saying that with the strong pheromone, the queen pheromone yeah. suppresses the swarming. Yeah. The it, it, it does, yeah. So if you've doubled it, 
Yeah. Queen for yeah. 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 So actually, uh, a, a true queen uh, colony will uh, is less is less likely to swarm than a one colony. Uh, but but if they swarm, you get to have a really big swarm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, just a close close up of the, my fantastic drawings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll just explain a little bit my my year of beekeeping. And what I do in March, usually maybe the last week of March, depending on, I I, I would like for the the willow or to start coming so they can collect some pollen and then I put a bag of, of, of feed, liquid feed on each side. I just I use a pin needle and just just puncture it and put it on the on the hive and uh, the goal is to get the queen to start laying eggs a little early and it kind of gives them a kick start. It's more like I feel sometimes like charging them up with a battery that you know you really, you really notice a difference uh, uh, later down the line when you're putting on uh, putting on supers. And have you fed them during the winter? Yes. 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 So fondant or liquid? Liquid. Liquid through yes. the winter as well. Yes. Uh, what is the liquid you're using? I use uh, I use about eighteen to twenty kilos of sugar per hive. And I mix that in water, mm. and I think I use uh, I think I use. Oh, I'm not sure. I I don't remember, but it's. Uh, so we do two to one for the winter. Yeah. Well, no, we do it uh, more, more like one to three or something like one with water and three with. Yeah. 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 Same. Yeah. 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 And, and also, you can see it a little bit here, but I, I just let, let these, I don't remove them when they're empty, and then when I come and look and the bees are starting to build mm. here, then I know it's, it's time to put on, on brew box number two. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so in May, I'll make queens. Um, and, and that's also the great thing about I'll just go back a little bit um, about if you if you if you're gonna make queen cells, you know that split is perfect for for uh, for um, starting cells because you get a lot of bees, a lot of bees in there. A so young bees. yeah, a lot of young bees. So I'll, I'll graft and, and use that as a as a cell starter. And then I'll, when I have cells, I'll take maybe 10 to 15 and I'll just put them, when they're started, I'll just put them out in, in different colonies and they'll finish them. So uh, when they're started, the colonies will finish them and then I'll, I'll just remove them and, and take them home and put them in the incubator until they're ready to, to harvest. And sometimes I'll put in cells, and sometimes I'll I'll mark queens and, and use that instead. I think that if I'm going to use virgin queens, I prefer them not to have been in touch with the nurse bees. It's, to me, it seems like getting the, getting a colony to accept a a, a, a queen, a, a virgin queen, is more difficult if she has a smell of other bees. So then I'll, I'll just mark the queen and put her in a cage and straight into the nuke. And, and so usually that goes 90% of the time she gets mated. I usually use, well, there's a couple of different systems. I don't know what system you use in, in Ireland. Uh, I usually use this. I, I don't remember what it's called. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is uh, an American system. I, I like that too. Yeah, yeah. 
Just if you're going to just and go and just you may think you put the Virgin Queens into a nuke there, or yeah. like easily yeah. happy day or something. Yeah, but I, I you, well, I have some some of the oh. happy day hour yeah. and those boxes, but usually I, I put it into a nuke. Yeah, I make that. Yeah, uh, a, a big one like the one I, I when I made a split or or small ones, uh, a three frame uh, nuke. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. So this is a three frame nuke. I, I just make I made these myself, and because apidea is nice, but I, I think it's a lot of work when you, you have a lot of bees and small frames and you know a lot of small equipment to to move around. I think so, better success for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll harvest. Here you see some of them. I'll, I'll I would go and I'll, I'll harvest bees and and brood. Usually two with bees and brood and one would feed and then I'll add a cell and I will just uh, let the queen mate in, in this and then when she's made it and she's she really you know, there's a lot of bees there usually in the beginning end of July beginning of August I will put her on a, in a two queen system and give her one super for the heather so so when this is, is when is the heather? What what is it August or it's from well it depending. Up up in the mountains it starts fifteenth to twentieth of July. And down by the coast it's actually later and it's more like the fifth, tenth of August. So so I, I would typically I would I would not move this up in the mountains. I I, I would give it time to just expand and then put it uh, in a bee or close to the sea because then the heather is, is later and uh, I, there's a bigger chance for me to collect heather honey. And a couple of things also, you see, there's a, I have a ventilation here. I don't have one in the back because if I want to feed them with just with sugar, I can, I can just open the lid and just pour that down here. And the ants will not kind of you know get to the sugar, so the sugar will be right here. And you can see it here a little bit. I'll I'll have five to six on a pallet, and I'll just move them a little bit so the entrance is a little different from each each uh, nook. And then my goal is to to have them made by. 20, yeah, 25th of, of June, something like that. Because if I get, if we have a successful mating, then they will get strong enough to collect heather honey. <clears throat> so July, I harvest and extract the, the multifloral honey. Uh, this is Isaac again, he's a good helper. And we have did we find uh, the net? This uh, I call it linden. We have uh, not every year, maybe every second or third year, we can get a pretty good crop from from um, from linden trees. And we have two types of linden. We have the more the domestic ones that, or the, the imported ones, and we have the ones that has been there for over a thousand years. And uh, I brought some of the honey, I guess you probably tasted it before. It's a little minty taste to it. Do you have this one? The, the bee sweeper. That's become my best friend. What does it do? The incubator, is it? Yeah, no. I, I, I use it for harvesting honey. I just take <coughs> the frame. I have a video I'll show you. And, and this will sweep, this will sweep all the bees off. <laughs> and it just makes it a lot easier to 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 harvest honey. It, it, it's uh, it's brilliant. Yeah. So here I'm moving for I'm moving colonies for heather in the end of July. So these this is some of the nuke boxes, and then I'll I'll move them up, and then I'll I'll put them two and two with entrance each way, and just leave them for a few days, and then I'll go back up with a a box and and just put them in a box with a with a dividing board and a queen excluder and put on a put on a, a super on top.
see if we can. I have a, I have a video here. You know, I'm not I'm not good at you know filming myself. You know, Patty he's much better at that. But you see, the, the, there's bees in the air, but they're not really aggressive. It's they're just flying around, minding their own business. Filming yourself is, you know, that's a good experience because then you see how ineffective you are and <laughs> really how to, you know, where you can improve. So there's like a photo, what do you call it, like a oh, sensor, yeah, here. So when I put down a, a frame, yeah. it will just start automatically. Wow. Wow. That's just brushes. Yeah, that's just brushes. Uh -huh. yeah. And the, the bees are in this chamber, and I'll show you what I do. So, is that powered by a, a generator? Is it electric? Yeah, it's electric. Yeah, you can charge it. So the battery is right here. And it's just a great, you know, instead of doing like this and keep getting, you know, problems with your elbows. What is it called? A bee sweeper. A bee sweeper. Yeah. They're made in, I think, Croatia or. So Serbia or something, yeah. No, they're, no, South Korea, I think, actually, I think it's South Korea. And you can get fresh brushes, so when, when the brushes get a little sticky, then I'll just change the brushes. And you can, yeah, so uh, I, that's, I really like that. So, like I said, it's my best friend. You know, of course, I like my wife the best, though, but... Uh, <laughs> I want to have a flat battery. Where are the bees going? Into the bottom. So, and I'll just yeah. pour it right back. Oh. You need a sweeper to sweep them up. Yeah. So that's a, that's a pretty neat one. I like. Uh, so in August, it's the heather flow. You live damp weather and get the, the bearding on, on the hives and. So that's a good strong hive. And then we harvest in September and extract heather honey. How do you, how do you process the heather honey? A honey loosener. Oh, and spin it in. Yeah, it? and then I'll, yeah, I'll just extract it in the extractor after I loosen it. Oh. That, that, work, that works fine. And will it strain for you then too? Well, I have, uh, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, okay. I think I have, yeah. If, I hope we don't run out of battery. Then we'll just take a break and fix this. Um, so this is a fellow beekeeper. Um, so he puts it into the decapper. Okay. Let me pair up back in the car. Okay. Take the power separately. Okay. And then it, it goes into the honey loose. It's like pins or needles that mm -hmm. they make one in Norway and they also make one in New Zealand. Maybe a thousand pins in it. Yeah, yeah. And you need about 25, 26, 27 degrees on the frames in, in order to extract the honey. And then, that, that works really well. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, that separ this separates wax and and uh, and honey, so like the, the the weight is different. So this would actually be able to separate about four hundred kilos per hour. I see. Yeah. And that is feeding time. <laughs> you you help beekeepers pollinate crops and produce food for. You know the you know local food, so it's just a you know it's just a circle, and we just need to get people to understand that. When you pay a little bit more for local honey, you you actually get a little more. Yeah. This is something from Wicklow for you to take home with you and remember us when you're uh, you. there. You're you. very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>